Hello guys, I'm Shlok and you're watching Tech Burner. There is a plethora of ROMs for the Moto G4 Plus and choosing one ROM that fits the need of every user is very tough and almost near to impossible. I've tried a lot of ROMs on my phones and in this video I'll be reviewing one of the most popular ROMs and I'll be reviewing the Invicta OS ROM on the Moto G4 Plus. This is the official variant of the ROM so if this ROM is present on your device, most of the designs, the animation, the performance would be quite similar to the Moto G4 Plus and other things like performance or battery life would be relative to the Moto G4 Plus. So without wasting any further time, let's get straight into the review of this ROM. The first thing that you'll notice when you power on the device are the animations. The boot animation is quite spectacular and that caught my eye because I'm a little bit of a designer. And when you power on the device as well, you can see that the design is all over the place. The icons have been redesigned, there's the Invicta OS in the settings menu and it also looks quite good. You can also tap on the Invicta version and it will open up the Invicta logo. It is quite similar to the Nokia d -Steric. The wallpapers have also been custom designed and even the small things like the status bar icons have been redesigned to match the feel of the whole ROM. All in all, the ROM is quite beautiful to look at and feels very polished when you use it. All of the things fit well with each other and they look quite nice. When it comes to performance, I don't really believe in benchmarks but I took some benchmarks just for you guys. The N22 benchmark came out to be around 45,000 and previously I took the benchmarks for the stock ROM and the Lineage OS ROM. Stock ROM scored around 46,000 and Lineage OS scored around 48,000. To be honest, I don't believe in this score because the performance that I got out of the device was way better than this. The Nina Mark score was 59.8 and on Quadrant Benchmark, it scored 13,662. So according to the benchmarks, it's kind of a moderate ROM, but when you actually reuse the ROM, you can make out that the performance on the ROM is quite impressive. One thing that I noticed in this ROM is that the animations are tuned to be a bit faster. So even when they are running on 1x, they are running a bit faster and it makes the device feel a bit faster. If you keep it just like that, the animations will run smoothly and they won't skip a lot of frames. But if you turn up the speed of the animations even just a bit, they will start skipping frames and sometimes the animations won't even play. Don't get me wrong, the ROM is not slow. It is quite fast, but it can be a bit choppy at times. Most of the choppiness is due to the animation. Sometimes you will also notice it while scrolling. But when you compare it to some other ROMs like the Resurrection Remix ROM, the frame drops are still less. The battery on this ROM, however, is quite stable and it will easily get you through a day. In some other ROMs, I have noticed that when you start playing games, the battery goes down very quickly. But in this ROM, it's not the case. The battery is quite stable and it goes down slowly. So if you want a ROM for battery life, this might be the one. I'll try to cover some of the features that are present in the settings menu and then we'll talk about the gaming on the device. But before we start with that, if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you press on the subscribe button and also tap on the notification bell because I keep making videos like this. This ROM has quite a lot of features and most of the features are quite useful in day-to-day -day usage. I won't say that this ROM is stocked with features but you have the essential list of features and there are quite a lot of them. I'll scroll down the list so you can see how long the list is. It has a particular amount of features that work well with the ROM and sync in properly with each other. Whenever I find ROMs that are start with features, I see one thing in common and that is some features don't work well with each other and due to that there might be some conflicting issues in the ROM. Like in some cases you can have the lock screen notifications handled by two different events and that could trigger the same event twice and it can cause problems or glitches in the lock screen. That was just for example and I didn't notice that at all in this ROM. All of the features in this ROM sync in well with each other. So you won't notice any problems or issues with the features in this ROM. So we'll go one by one for all the features. You can enable the pixel navbar animation. This is the animation that you get when you press the home button. You can make changes to the lock screen itself. All of the features have been compiled into an additional features column and it makes it really easy to access all the features. You can make changes to the lock screen as well. You can change the alarm text. You can hide the clock widget if you want or the date widget if you want. 
You can also double tap on the lock screen to put the device to sleep. You might have noticed that when you reboot your device, you have to first enter your pin, then only you can use the fingerprint sensor to unlock your device. This option will skip the pin and will directly unlock your device. You can hide status bar in the lock screen as well. And there are some other lock screen shortcuts as well. If you want more settings for some of these features, you can tap them and, and they would have like inside settings that you can change as well. You can also enable or disable the vibration when you click on the fingerprint scanner. And these are some of the small features that you can make changes to like the shutdown confirmation when you power off your device. You can enable or disable the force close notifications or hide the running services icon in the header of the status bar. I don't want the hidden services icon so I'll just quickly hide it and now it's not there anymore. Many people like one tap to turn the Wi-Fi or all of these features on. You can enable this feature and it will work like that. You can change the size of the quick setting tiles. You can change the amount of rows and the amount of columns as well. This one is quite common and is one of my favorite ones and this is the amount of volume steps that you have. Currently I'm having 7 volume steps for the notification. If I change it to 15 then reboot my device, I'll have 15 volume steps and it would take me 15 clicks to get to the top volume. This helps a lot when you're listening to music and you want the perfect exact volume for your song. There are some other status bar features as well that you can use. You can, you can change the carrier label and customize it to your liking. And you can also enable the super user indicator. What that will do is if you're using any root application, it would enable the super user icon in the status bar. You can enable one handed mode as well. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to swipe on the nav bar. You can swipe to the left or to the right and it will enable the one handed mode. You can click anywhere outside the screen and it will disable it. It works quite nice in some situations, but I don't use it to be honest. So that was kind of fit for most of the features. I'll be extremely honest, I can't make out much difference in the gaming performance between most of the ROMs of the Moto G4 Plus. In all of them, games seem to work just fine enough. And this is the case for this ROM as well. I didn't notice any kind of lag while playing games on my phone. But one thing I noticed while playing games on this ROM is that it doesn't get as hot as some of the other ROMs. When it comes to camera performance, it's quite standard, but I like the UI of the camera application a lot. It's quite similar to the stock one, but there are some changes that I like. You can of course install the stock Motorola camera if you want. I will leave a link in the description box below, which will have the Motorola camera if you want to install it. It will be a zip file that you'll have to flash in the recovery mode. So that was the Invicta OS ROM. I'll be doing a full comparison of three or four ROMs, most probably tomorrow on the Moto G4 Plus. So if you have any suggestions, leave them down in the comment section below. And if you like this video, make sure you press on the subscribe button because I'll be making some more videos for the Moto G4 Plus. And you can also watch some previous videos on this channel.